What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next section. This is gonna be an important one. We're now gonna start talking about the quadratic formula. And this is a concept that you're gonna see come up in grade 10 a lot, and also for the rest of your high school career. So super important to get these fundamentals down. And we've mentioned the quadratic formula in previous videos. We didn't fully go over it, but we mentioned how it fits when we are solving quadratic equations. So let's do a quick review here. Remember we went over three different ways, or we mentioned three different ways to solve quadratic equations. So the first way, and this was in the previous section, we were doing it by factoring. Okay, so for example, if we have something like 4x squared minus 16x minus nine, is equal to zero. We have a quadratic equation like this, we have to solve for the x values. Well, a lot of times these quadratics are gonna be able to factor smoothly. So taking this over here and factoring it, notice we can't take anything out of this quadratic, so let's do this on the side here. All right, so the a value is four, the b value is negative 16, the c value is negative nine, the ac value is negative 36, and so two numbers that multiply to negative 36 and then add up to that b value negative 16, what would they be? Negative 18 and two. So we'd have four x squared minus 18 x plus two x minus nine, like that. And then from these two, we could take out a two x, so we'd be left with two x minus nine. And then from these two, we could take out a positive one. So we'd be left with two x minus nine, brackets the same as expected, then we could take out a 2x minus 9, we're left with 2x plus 1, like that, right? So this quadratic factors into 2x minus 9, 2x plus 1. We're still solving the quadratic equation, so we write the equals 0, and basically this is going to happen when 2x minus 9 is equal to 0, or when 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. So this is going to happen when x is 9 over 2, or it's going to happen when x is negative 1 over two, right? So that's one way to solve quadratic equations. That's the way that we've been going through so far. However, not every quadratic equation that you get is gonna be able to factor. And so we need other methods to solve these equations. And the method that we're gonna go through in this video is using the quadratic or something called the quadratic formula. And what the quadratic formula basically is, is if you have a quadratic, or sorry, if you have a quadratic equation and the quadratic is in standard form like this, right? So it's fully expanded. Then you have that quadratic in standard form equaling zero. Basically the value of X, remember that's what we're solving for with equations, the values of X, Basically, the value of x is going to be this formula here, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, like that. That's what the quadratic formula is, right? So, looks pretty complex, but you will end up memorizing it sooner or later because you're just gonna be using it so many different times. And so this is a nice formula because no matter what quadratic we get here, whether it's one that's gonna factor like this or one that doesn't factor, we're going to get solutions for that X value. So let me show you how it works with this same quadratic. Let's see if we could get these same solutions when we plug it into that formula. So again, the a value is four, the b value is negative 16, and then the c value is negative nine. So we just have to take these parameters here and plug them in to that formula. So if we write it out, we'd have x equals negative b, so we have negative and then the b value is negative 16, so just be careful with that, right? Whatever this b is here, that's like in a bracket. So if it's negative, then you put the negative in the bracket, those two negatives are gonna eventually end up being a positive. And then we have plus or minus. This plus or minus here is a potential for two solutions, right? We got two solutions over here. So it's basically almost like two formulas in one. You could write this as negative b plus the square root of b squared minus four ac, then negative b minus 
d squared root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, right? But we combine those two formulas into one, so we just put a plus or minus there. So I'll put a plus or minus here, then we'll have b squared, so it's going to be negative 16 squared minus 4 times the a value of 4 times the c value of negative 9. And it's going to be all over 2 times that a value of and so when we do the algebra here, let's see what we get. So negative negative, that would be positive 16 plus or minus. Now negative 16 squared would give us positive 256. Negative 4 times positive 4 would give us negative um, 16. Negative 16 times negative 9 would give us positive 144. And that's going to be all over 8 like that. So if we continue solving this, we'll have x equals 16 plus or minus um, 256 plus 144 would give us 400. And then that's still going to be all over 8 like that. Continuing this here, we'll have x equals 16 plus or minus square root of 400 is uh, 20 all over, uh, sorry, not 18, 8 getting confused here like that and then notice there's two solutions here because of this plus or minus so we could either have x equaling 16 plus 20 over 8 or we can have x equaling 16 minus 20 over 8 like that 16 plus 20 would give us 36 over 8 that would give us what we could divide the top by 4, the bottom by 4, that would be 9 over 2. And then over here, we'll have x equals negative 4 over 8, and that's going to be negative 1 over 2, like that. Notice the exact same solutions that we got when we factored it. Right? So just proof that this quadratic formula works out in the same way. You're going to get the proper solutions is just a little bit more algebra. Again, personally, if I see something that factors, I usually go with the factoring method. But again, in this section, we're going to be dealing with lots of quadratics that aren't going to factor. So we'll have to use the formula. And so these x values that we get here, a lot of times they're just going to be decimal values, right? So those are the two main ways. And then if you remember in the overview video for quadratic equations, I also went over a potential third way you could use. This is a less popular way, but I am going to show it as well. So the third way is we can go through completing the square. Okay, this way is usually not shown but as I kind of mentioned, technically you don't even need the quadratic formula because you know how to, how to complete the square. So you could always do this method. And this method would work for quadratics that don't factor either. But again, it's just not as popular of a method. Usually you're going to be doing it with factoring or with the quadratic formula. But in case you are doing it uh, through completing the square or your teacher shows it to you, let's go through it. So the way we do it is we take the quadratic, we complete the square on it. So first we take out a four from the first two terms. So we end up with that, we got the minus nine at the end. Then we take the negative four divided by two, square it. That would give you negative two to the power two, which would give you positive four. So we'd have x squared minus four x uh, plus four minus four minus nine. Then the negative four we take out, multiply it by the four in front. Uh, so minus 4 times 4 gives us negative 16, and then we got the minus 9 like that. And then this over here, it's always going to be a perfect square trinomial, x minus 2 squared, and then this is going to be minus 25 like that. Okay, so this quadratic, this quadratic, they're both the exact same thing. This is in standard form, this is in vertex form. So you got to first take your quadratic, whatever you have, change it to vertex form, which again takes a little bit of time. That's why this formula is, or this uh, process of solving quadratic equations is not as popular, right? So I just took this, rewrote it like this, because this left side, this left side, they're the exact same thing. So now what you could do, you could isolate for this x value. So we could bring the negative 25 over, so that would be positive 25. 
divide both sides by four. So we'd have x minus two squared equals 25 over four. And then watch what happens here. Square root both sides to get rid of this exponent. We end up with x minus two equaling the square root of 25 over four would give us plus or minus. Remember the square root can be plus or minus. That's where the two solutions are gonna come from. It's gonna be five over two, right? Because the square root of a fraction, we could take the square root of the numerator, square root of the denominator, just to review some rules with, uh, with square roots. So that's what we did here. We took the square root of five, square root of four, we end up with five over two and it's plus or minus. So now notice, two possible solutions. Either we can have x minus two equaling positive five over two or x minus two equaling negative five over two. So what would happen here? We'd have x equaling five over two plus two or x equaling negative five over two plus two. Uh, if we change this to common denominators, five over two plus four over two or negative five over two plus four over two Notice what do we get? Nine over two or um, negative one over two, like that. Exact same solutions that we got with factoring and also with the quadratic formula, right? So this is another, again, less popular way. Take your quadratic, convert it to vertex form, and then you only have one variable to isolate for, and then you could do this process over here. Just remember the plus or minus at this point and that's gonna give you your two different solutions. All right, so again, the quadratic formula though, it's gonna be used on quadratics that usually don't factor. So I wanted to show it with an example of a quadratic that factors, just so you could see that we're getting the same solutions no matter which method we use. But again, this is not going to usually be the case. In this section, we're going to be dealing with lots of quadratics that aren't going to factor. So I want to do an example before we continue on with the section and do a bunch of quadratics. So actually, let me not write a quadratic. Let me write a quadratic equation like this. So let's say we have a quadratic equation like this. Now, this quadratic here, it's not going to factor, okay? There's no two numbers that are going to multiply to that AC value of 1 times negative 2 and add up to that B value of negative 6, right? So this is not going to factor. So again, let's use the quadratic formula. Let's see what we get. So notice that the A value is 1, the B value is negative 6, the C value is negative 2, like that for this quadratic. So plugging it into the formula, let's rewrite the formula. It's that right there. So let's see what happens. Negative B, so negative six, put that in brackets, plus or minus. Here we'll have negative six squared minus four times the A value of one times the C value of negative two. And then that's gonna be all over two times the A value of one. So this would be positive six plus or minus. Here, negative six squared is 36. Negative four times one times negative two would give us positive eight. And then this is gonna be all over two, like that. So let's see what this simplifies to. We'll have six plus or minus. 36 plus eight gives us 44. And then that's gonna be over two. So at this point, you're probably seeing this square root here. It's not gonna give us an integer right? This is going to be some kind of decimal value. Now, another thing I want to mention, and I will be mentioning through the rest of this section, is that a lot of times your teacher may expect you to keep this as an exact value, so no decimals allowed, meaning that you'd have to keep the expression with a square root in it, so you may have to simplify this. In grade 11, you for sure will, but even in grade 10, some teachers may expect you to simplify this. So before getting the decimals, I'm going to simplify this radical expression here in case your teacher's going through it. If your teacher doesn't expect you to, then you don't have to worry about this step. You can just go straight into the final decimal answers that I'll get at the end. But again, this will give you some good um, prereq knowledge before grade 11 because you will have to know how to do that in grade 11 and grade 12 as well. 
So the way we do that, we've uh, simplified radical expressions before. What we do, square root of 44, we see, can we rewrite this in terms, can we simplify this, meaning can we rewrite it as a multiplication of two radical terms where one of the radical terms is going to be a squareable number. And notice that 44, we can rewrite that as 4 times 11, so it'd be root 4, root 11, root 4 we know is 2. Okay, so square root of 44, 2 root 11, those two are the exact same thing. Right? If you plug them both in your calculator, you'd get the exact same decimals. And if you are simplifying these radical expressions, this is the step you have to take with the square root. Sometimes it won't simplify, but in this case it does. The square root of 11, that can't simplify any further because we can't divide 11 by a rootable number. We can't divide it by 4, we can't divide it by 9, we can't divide it by 16, etc., etc. The 44, though, we were able to divide by 4 by a rootable number, and so that gave us that 2 in front. Okay, so what we do now is we go 6 plus or minus 2 root 11 all over 2. Right, this and this are the exact same thing, it's just the square root of 44, we rewrote as that. And then notice that from these two, you want to see, can you factor something from this and this? Notice we could take out a 2, and we'd end up in brackets, 6 divided by 2 would be 3, plus or minus, 2 divided by 2 would just give us 1, and then the root 11 stays as it is, and we don't have to write that 1 in front like that. And then this is going to be all over 2, and then notice that those 2's, cancel out right there, and so we end up with 3 plus or minus root 11, like that. Okay, so let me write that here. This simplifies to 3 plus or minus root 11, and so the two solutions to this quadratic equation are either x equals 3 plus root 11, or x equals 3 minus root 11. Now, if your teacher doesn't expect you to simplify to here, you can also rewrite this as 6 plus root 44 over 2, or 6 minus root 44 over 2. If you plug this and this into the calculator, just be careful with the brackets and everything, this and this, they're the exact same thing. This and this are the exact same thing. Again, it just depends on your, whether your teacher expects uh, expects you to go from here to here, from here to here. If not, then okay, you can leave it like that. But if they do, then the simplifying process is what we just went through. And then also, a lot of times, textbooks will just give the decimal values, or your teacher may just expect you to get that right there. And so to get these, you can just go straight from here to here. You don't have to do all of that simplifying. Again, it's just in case your teacher expects that. Right, so notice that we didn't get integer values or any smooth fractions for these solutions here. And I rounded these, right? These decimals keep going. I think it was like 3, 1, 6, 6, et cetera, et cetera. I rounded it to two decimal places. But nevertheless, 6.32, negative 0.32, a little rounded, but those are the solutions to this quadratic equation. If you took these values, plug them in here, you would get something very close to zero on the, um, on the left side. If you used even more decimal places, it would be even closer to zero. The left side would equal the right side. So you could always check your answer with, uh, with these kinds of questions. Okay, so... That is an example of solving a quadratic equation where that quadratic is, um, is not going to factor using the formula. You could also do it with completing the square. I'm not going to do it in this video because we're focusing on the quadratic formula in this section, but if you want to do that third completing the square method, see if you get the same solutions, feel free to do so for practice. Okay, so over the next couple of videos, we're just going to do a bunch of practice with this formula. We're going to do, I'm also going to be simplifying these radical expressions whenever it is possible, just in case your teacher expects that. And then I'll also be giving the final decimal value.